Hey everybody, Syntax77 here, and today I want to show you a new piece of hammock camping gear I got. It's a two-person Xenon tarp from Dutchware Gear, and by two-person I mean it is designed to have two hammocks on one pair of trees under one tarp. Now this can kind of be seen as a follow-up video to one that my wife and I did a eh, little while back. It keeps us just far enough apart that we're not bumped right up against each other. But still close enough to have <laughs> connections like that. In that video, we showed how to use the Dutchware beetle buckle system suspension system along with the spreader bar pole to get two hammocks onto one pair of trees like I have today. So if you've already seen that, great. If not, and that's why you're here, then maybe watch that afterwards and you can get the specifics on how I have this set up here. Although this is also, I love myself some uh, dual purpose gear, if you will. And this right here, I'm actually planning on in the near future, because it is winter now, despite this uh, calm weather here in Delaware today, I'm gonna go up north for a snow camping trip and this is also a good system for a lot of shelter in inclement weather, whether that be high winds, snow conditions, rain, and what have you, because it's super big, as you can see, and we're gonna get into the specifics of that as we go. But for right now, let's just start with the aspect of two people hammock camping on one pair of trees. So in that first video that I mentioned, we kind of pointed out the fact that a regular tarp, especially a hexagonal tarp uh, cut, didn't quite fit the bill because uh, on a hex tarp, it kind of cuts in on an angle on each side, which is usually great, saves weight, and uh, works well for one hammock on a pair of trees. But for this setup, because we have the spreader bar pole here. When we tried a hex tarp in that video, as expected, uh, it cut pretty close and this was actually rubbing up against the sides of it. In this system, it's more of a rectangular shape, although it still does have uh, some nice cuts to it. But you can see it gives me full coverage. And you may have noticed, it's got these double beastie D rings here and those accept a spreader bar pole that opens up the one end here quite nicely and gives me some good clearance for both of these hammocks on the spreader bar system and the beetle buckle there. On the other end, you have, and I have it already deployed, doors. Now, I don't have it completely bunkered down like you could. You can see there at the bottom though, I do have the, the bottom shut. And up here, you could tie this out even more. And if you really wanted to, I could pitch it down and really make it tight. Also kind of depends, I believe, on the width of the tree. I'm on a bit of a wide tree today. Um, so my straps are coming out. But if I did a narrower tree and put some effort into it, I could cinch this down even more and that would cut out drafts, precipitation, etc. In my case, right now, I'm just setting it up kind of as an example for a little bit of wind protection and privacy. As I mentioned, this is a Xenon tarp. Dutch has a whole line of Xenon tarps. It's a particular uh, type of fabric he has. It is polyester based as opposed to nylon, so as minimum stretch. It is uh, impregnated with silicone, so it's water resistant. And as hopefully you can see perspective wise, I still have a very decent amount of space in here, despite the fact that I have two hammocks under this tarp. Um, it tapers out from the head end there and the spreader bar is the widest part. And right here, I kind of have an area where I could get changed or cook, etc. And then when I go on the winter trip that I'm hoping to do in a couple weeks in the snow, I'll just be straight down the center line here. So I should be able to set up uh, gear, staging area, cooking, etc., on each side. So that's pretty nice. I do have a ridgeline mod here that's running along internally. And that is actually supporting the uh, internal pole mod I have here. 
and that guy right there is like very similar to a tent pole has some shock cord running through it collapses down and breaks out and it gives me some width and space in here and that runs about six ounces the one at the end there is about two ounces the fabric of the tarp itself like i mentioned is that xenon fabric it's got a square ripstop pattern in it and it's running for the hammock body itself like 22 23 ounces something like that so a little under a pound and a half if you throw in both the tarp mods or the pole mods rather uh, you're looking at 31 ounces or a little under two pounds not too bad if you're splitting it up and if you're going on a winter expedition or something with a lot of rain predicted like i am um, that's going to be well worth the wait i do have dyneema fiber tarps that are super light but they don't have anywhere near the coverage of this and the space because of the uh pole mods in here which also brings up a good point the size on this it has a 12 foot ridge line which a lot of hammock camping tarps are 11 foot standard me personally i've always upgraded to a 12 foot ridge line anyway i think he did this because he wanted some extra space for the double uh, hammock setup as well as the doors down there now if i open the doors up if i wasn't expecting wind or rain or snow i could get the coverage even bigger um, in a lateral sense but for me in the winter i'm probably going to have the doors shut if you're out actually specifically looking for a single person tarp for heavy bad weather conditions like rain snow wind etc he does have tarps that have doors at both ends but a lot of times people seem to just pitch towards the wind and do doors on one end so in my case if the wind is coming from down there i would have this open right here so i could easily get in and out um i've never had a tarp with doors on any end so i think i'll be pretty happy with that down here at the end you can see the opening here now in my case for all of my tie outs here let me show you i did a loop of shock cord just to give a little bit of a wind load buffeting if you will that's optional but i did that attached to some tarp worms which i've shown in other videos but they're very easy if you don't like knots like me uh, you can tension these really quick and down to some tent spikes but over here for the doors i just have a shock cord loop and because I like to pitch it low, which is how I have it right now, I just have a tent spike and it's directly connected and that keeps a nice low tight pitch and I pretty much just overlap the doors. If, however, you put this up higher, which would be probably ideal if you're not expecting really bad conditions, you could pitch it higher, have a little more headroom, in which case you would probably not be able to pull off directly connecting with the shock cord you would want some more leeway and for that i simply carry a little bit of this i've had this for years a pair of these a couple of pairs actually instead of tarp worms they're called hook worms and the difference is they are detachable so i could hook onto this just picture if this was free i could hook onto that right there and then i have a good deal of zingit cord there and i could pull that out to a tree or whatever i want either to do wider doors or as may be the case i could open the doors up and get even more coverage right here maybe tie it to a tree or something like that if i was not expecting rain or blowing rain etc so I'm looking forward to trying out the different options with that. In terms of tie-out points, you actually have a total of eight. You got two for the doors, four for each corner, and two middles on the outside, which I find helpful, especially when you're using the pole mod that I have inside there to really kind of batten down the hatches. But there's another view of it opened up. And like I said, it's pitched low. And it's still pretty darn huge. I like it. I also have there, as you can probably see, a continuous ridgeline setup, which is basically a single line of cord between the trees and some Prusik knot 
uh, fixtures that allow me to float the tent back and forth. I like that for setup and ease of use. And it gives you the option to go underneath like I have now, or some guys go over top, which keeps the tarp a little higher, but you know, there is the issue of abrasion against the tarp. But I am thinking of potentially experimenting with just doing fixed ridge lines off the ends because I think with my setup, with the continuous ridge line underneath, I may be losing some space there um, and some headroom. But as of right now, it's big enough. I think it's going to be fine, but we'll experiment. My wife doesn't go out in the winter, so like I said, my first use of this is going to be in the winter with just myself as kind of a bomb-proof snow shelter. But when we go out with two people, we may find that a fixed ridge line or maybe over the top of the ridge line will give us some more kind of static or fixed headroom so that we don't have to worry about this rubbing. But right now, it seems wide enough that pole's not going to hit the tarp, which was the problem before when we were playing around with this. Um, we actually brought this out to the Adirondacks in this two hammock configuration, but we brought a cheap trucker tarp, a huge rectangular one that I wasn't worried about rubbing. Um, but obviously you wouldn't want a setup where the pole digs into the tarp. And that's kind of the beauty of this system is that this little two ounce pole here keeps it nice and open, which is cool. But I think for even single person use, that's going to be nice to have a wide entrance. And then if it really went crazy, like snow, wind, or rain wise, um, I could take that pole off really easily and then reposition these down and pitch down a little tighter and get myself some protection from the elements. But man, just look at the coverage on that thing. It's pretty sick. I'm pretty excited to get this out there and using it. But that's pretty much it. Just wanted to share that. I'm definitely looking forward to getting out there and using it. But if anybody else out there has any tips or recommendations on setups for two hammocks under one tarp on one pair of trees, I'd definitely be interested in hearing about that. So post that in the comments section below. But until next time, that's Denali. I'm Syntax77 and you have fun out there.